Hello friends. Welcome to the fanfic adventure. How are you all? So in this video, we will see what if Naruto was the legend of Super Saiyan God and become the dangerous shinobi of planet. But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time, let's begin the story. Me throughout the universe. There are plenty of civilizations that thrive on different planets. Some of those civilizations are a peaceful kind, only looking to continue living in harmony while advancing themselves as a species. Then there are other kinds of civilizations out there that thirst for chaos, the desire for battle literally coursing through their genetics. Believe it or not, such a civilization does exist and they have a name as well. The Saiyans. A race of warriors bred to battle always thirsting for their next fight and to take their power to new heights. Nobody knows how long they have been around, for all we know the Saiyans have been around since the beginning of time itself. Now while the Saiyans have conquered many worlds, there is a story lost in the sands of time. A dark age that could have brought a very end to the Saiyan race itself. A war between two sides of Saiyans, good and evil. Thanks to the efforts of five other pure-hearted Saiyans, one unnamed Saiyan achieved a power of literal godly proportions. Centuries later this form would be called the Super Saiyan God. Using this power, the Super Saiyan God fought against the evil that was plaguing his race. Some say he failed in his quest to achieve peace amongst his race while others say he was able to achieve it. History has long since forgotten the name of the original Super Saiyan God. Until now, this story is about the upbringing of the original Super Saiyan God. A story of loss, adventure, love and exploring the mystery of who this mighty Saiyan was. Our story here begins with a Saiyan child that goes by the name. Naruto. Me. Mom. What's happening? A young child about the age of 10 shouted, his hand was in the vice grip of his mother's as she pulled him against his will to some destination. He and his mother were seemingly running as fast as they could toward some location. Now being a Saiyan, the child wondered why she didn't just fly to wherever they were going. Beneath the child's feet, he could feel the ground rumble and yet he didn't know why. No questions my son, we need to hurry quickly. The woman was beautiful, she had long spiky raven-colored hair that reached to the middle of her back. She was dressed in a dull pink and white battle armor complete with arm and shin guards. Around her waist, a furry brown appendage was wrapped tightly. The mother's name was named Harumi and she was a female warrior of the Saiyan race. Harumi knew her child was probably wondering why they weren't trying to fly, he was too young to understand the danger they were in. Flying would require the use of ki and if she even flared her ki for a moment, they would locate her and her child. But mom, the child tried to protest, hush Naruto. The now named Naruto pouted as his mom yelled at him. Naruto had the same colored hair as his mother but it was the same style as his father, just imagine Menma's hairstyle. Naruto was dressed in a white hoodie with protective under armor underneath. Blue shorts and black combat boots. Unlike his mother though instead of possessing a brown tail like any other normal Saiyan, his was a golden shade. It wasn't a bright gold color but it wasn't a dull shade either. Naruto glanced up and noticed the sky of planet Vegeta was unusually dark he could see glimpses of lightning flash within their black depths. Naruto had the feeling something bad was happening but he didn't know what it was. Almost there, Harumi muttered, watching as they approached a massive building. It was the building where they kept all the pods for space travel, with this they would make their escape off planet Vegeta. But as mother and son approached the building, the ground beneath their feet erupted and they were sent flying. Naruto cried out in surprise as he collided with a wall, Harumi was able to flip herself in mid-air and stop herself from taking any real damage. Naruto. Harumi cried out, she hoped that he was alright. She was angered with herself that she had actually dropped her senses enough to where she couldn't detect that oncoming key blast. You two wouldn't be trying to escape, are you? A voice asked. Harumi and Naruto looked up to see another Saiyan warrior floating before them. He had a black mohawk for hairstyle, he was dressed in the regular Saiyan armor. On his right eye, was a purple scouter and this Saiyan had a scar running down the right corner of his mouth. Dokaiso, Harumi growled, she should have known they would send him after her. Growing up, Dokaiso and her didn't really like each other. Dokaiso looked down upon Harumi because she was a female, yes this man was a meast pig or monkey since he was a Saiyan. 
Harumi didn't let any comment he made towards her affect her and rose in power, she remembered how she had humiliated him in battle one time. Dokaiso tried to show off in front of his friends by picking on her. Harumi was a bit of a hot-tempered Saiyan and she responded by breaking Dokaiso's nose. Since then, the two hated each other with a burning fury. But of course, Dokaiso smirked, his coal eyes glinted eagerly in anticipation, he couldn't wait to get rid of this wretched wannabe Saiyan and her bastard child. It's only fitting that I'm here to be the witness or hopefully the cause of you and your son's demise. Why are you coming after us Dokaiso? We've done nothing wrong, Harumi shouted. I wouldn't be too sure about that. I think treason against the king sure does sound like a big no-no, Dokaiso said. The Saiyan wagged his finger like he was scolding a child. We haven't committed treason. Oh so running away to the space deck and planning to use one of our pods to escape towards the rebel planet doesn't count as treason? Dokaiso mocked. His eyes then narrowed on Naruto. Especially when you and I both know about the prophecy the great Saiyan elder told us. That prophecy was a bunch of foolish babble made up by an insane old man, Harumi said, her words caused Dokaiso's eyes to harden. How dare this woman mock the great Saiyan elder? If you believe it's a bunch of foolish babble, then why are you trying so hard to escape? Silence met his question, that's what I thought. Don't forget about me either Harumi, a female voice said from her side. Harumi didn't take her eyes off Dokaiso, knowing that he would attack her the moment she let her guard down. But she recognized that voice anywhere. It was Akumiera, she was a powerful Saiyan and the two had butted heads a couple of times. Harumi and Akumiera had at one time were fighting for position for second in command in the Saiyan army. The fight was going to take place until Harumi found out she had been pregnant and naturally second in command went to Akumiera. When Naruto was born, Harumi had refused to go back and rejoin, she had decided she wanted to stay and raise Naruto. Akumiera took that as a sign of weakness from Harumi and she believed no Saiyan should show such weakness. From the corner of her eye, Harumi caught a glimpse of Akumiera. She was dressed in royal Saiyan armor, imagine Vegeta's armor when he first came to earth, and had a crimson scouter on her eye. She had luscious red lips, beautiful coal-colored hair and a nice C-cup-sized bust. She was definitely an eye-catcher to most of the male Saiyans. Akumiera took a glance at Naruto and smiled. Your son is definitely a cutie Harumi, will be as handsome as his father when he grows up, Akumiera commented before her smirk turned as sharp as a knife. If he has the chance I mean, Naruto quivered from her smile, it scared him. He hated feeling scared, his father told him to never be scared in the presence of an enemy, no matter what. Harumi growled, infuriated that this wretched Saiyan woman would dare threaten her son. Naruto I want you to get inside the chamber as quickly as possible and hide. Harumi quickly glanced back at her son with a determined gaze. Mommy will be in as quick as she can. But mom? Naruto weakly protested, he wanted to stay and offer any assistance he could in this fight. Yes his mother had been training him since he could walk, but he knew there was no chance of him winning against Akumiera or Dokaiso. Go now. Naruto jumped in fright from his mother's shout but obeyed nonetheless, he turned and ran as fast as he could towards the building. You're not getting away that easily, both Akumiera and Dokaiso shouted. Both Saiyan's hands were shrouded in ki. They fired off a blast towards the unsuspecting child. Harumi's eyes widened, seeing that they were attacking her son. Gathering her speed, she sped off to intercept the blasts as fast as she could. Luck seemed to be on her side though as she was able to appear right in front of the key blast's paths. Energy shield, Harumi muttered, expelling key out of her body which immediately began to condense into a protective shield. The two key blasts simply exploded when making contact with the shield but it made no scratch or even a mark on Harumi's impressive defensive technique. Harumi watched as Dokaiso and Akumiera smirked at her, causing the Saiyan blood flowing through her veins to boil. Harumi dropped her energy shield and slid into her fighting stance, prepare to die you too. Akumiera scoffed, as if we could lose to traitorous trash like you. With that the three Saiyans began their battle, me. With Naruto. Naruto ran as fast as his little legs could carry him through the halls of the massive building. It didn't take him long before he found a door that he knew lead to the space pods. Naruto had only been in this place once and that was due to when his mother had to make sure her space pod was still in working condition. Speaking of his mother's space pod, 
where was it? His coal eyes scanned the small row of rather large Saiyan space pods until he came upon the number 10, his mother's pod. The young Saiyan wasted no time in opening up the pod and climbing his way inside it. Leaning back against the comfortable chair that was installed within the pod, Naruto hugged his knees together and slightly teared up. Hurry up mom. Please, he whispered within the pod, knowing nobody could hear him. Little did he know that there were a set of eyes watching him, concealed within the darkness of the room. The wielder of the eyes had watched the young child climb into the space pod. The person shrouded in darkness decided the moment would come very soon, killing the child now would be far too easy, he would bide his time for the moment. Me. Back with Harumi in the fight, Harumi ducked, weaved and maneuvered around both Dokaiso and Akumiera as they attacked her relentlessly. And she was getting tired quickly, sure Harumi knew that she could take on Dokaiso or Akumiera individually. But together, fighting them felt like it was almost impossible. Come on Harumi, at least fight back, Dokaiso taunted, still throwing left and right punches, kicks, any part of his body that could cause some sort of harm towards Harumi. Harumi knew she wouldn't be able to dodge both Saiyans forever, so she made a quick decision. Gathering her key and using it to increase her speed, Harumi vanished in a burst of untraceable speed. What? Akumiera shouted, surprise filling her being. Harumi appeared next to Akumiera and blasted her with a kick to the jaw. While Akumiera was sent flying off, Harumi made her way towards Dokaiso. Fist slammed against fist as both Saiyans fought against one another. Harumi knew that Akumiera would recover in just seconds, she needed to get a few good hits on Dokaiso and fast. Harumi ducked under a punch before delivering a devastating uppercut to Dokaiso. Dokaiso grunted as he felt pain explode in his jaw and was about to say a few choice words about Harumi. Harumi cut him off though by attacking his midsection with harsh punches. Cupping her hands, Harumi began to gather her key. Ha! Dokaiso went soaring into the sky on a bright yellow key blast. By the looks of it, Dokaiso would be taking about a minute or two before he returned to battle. Harumi turned around only to be introduced to the shin of one pissed off Akumiera. Akumiera began bashing Harumi with harsh hits until she eventually grabbed the Saiyan mother by her neck and delivered a knee strike to the gut. Harumi spit out saliva and the oxygen in her lungs fled fast. With a cruel smirk, Akumiera bashed Harumi on the back of her head and she went on a collision course with the ground. Harumi was able to stop herself before she impacted though. She fell on one knee and panted slightly, sure she wasn't using her full strength yet but this two-on-one battle was tiring her out fast. Harumi heard Akumiera land on the ground behind her. Oh come on Harumi, we both know you can do better than that, Akumiera said. Or maybe you've been reduced to a shell of your former self all because of that little bastard of yours. Oh hell no, she did not just call her son a bastard. You're right, I can do better, Harumi wiped the saliva and blood mixture off her chin and turned to face Akumiera. Dokaiso finally made his way back into the fight and landed next to Akumiera, though he had a heavy glare set on Harumi. Both seen Harumi's eyes harden into onyx-colored ice chips practically. She was serious now. The ground beneath them began to shake and their scouters flared to life as Harumi's power rose. A whitish aura shrouded Harumi's body as she summoned more and more of her power. Harumi actually snarled at the two before unleashing a mighty yell and the moisture in the air around her exploded in response to her increase in power. Her power actually caused the scouters to explode on Akumiera and Dokaiso's faces but they didn't look disturbed in the slightest. For the past few minutes, each of them had just been toying around and testing the waters. The true battle was about to begin. Both Akumiera and Dokaiso began to copy Harumi's actions and started to increase their own powers. After all it would be foolish to fight her at the level of strength they were at now. Within moments, three full-powered Saiyans were squared off and ready to fight once more. Harumi was pulsating with her white aura wrapping around her body. Dokaiso was covered in a dark blue aura and Akumiera's was the same. Nobody said a word but the silence between them was almost deafening. So quiet that you could almost hear the rhythmic beat of each of their hearts. They were waiting to see who would make the first movement, to restart their epic battle. Harumi's eyes were trained on both Akumiera and Dokaiso, unmoving and settled in a fierce glare. Like a ferocious predator waiting to attack its prey. The battle finally began once more when Dokaiso shifted his eyes away from Harumi's. 
To weaker beings, it seemed like Harumi simply vanished, as if she hadn't been there at all. Dokaiso and Akumiera smirked though, they knew where she was. Akumiera turned sharply and lashed out with a kick and Dokaiso lashed out with a punch. Harumi intercepted both attacks. Her open palm blocked Dokaiso's punch and her knee had stopped Akumiera's kick. Dropping low, Harumi tried to sweep Akumiera off her feet but the Saiyan jumped and did a perfect backflip in the air. Dokaiso decided he wanted to squash Harumi, so he quickly tried to stomp down on her. Shit! Harumi muttered, rolling to the right and thrusting her body up. Harumi intercepted Dokaiso's outstretched leg. Harumi's arm muscles began to bulge as she lifted the much heavier Dokaiso and began to spin him around. Harumi mentally laughed as she heard her male opponent began to shout in surprise and with a massive battle cry, she released Dokaiso and he went flying towards Akumiera. Akumiera growled, she once again jumped over her airborne partner and decided it was time to use some of her more destructive attacks. Gathering key in her hands, she began to fire wave after wave of key blasts. Harumi's eyes widened before she took to the skies, the attacks following after her. The night sky of the planet began to light up as bright key blasts filled it, all trying and missing their intended target. Harumi was so focused on dodging the key blasts she was unaware that Dokaiso recovered and appeared before her. Dokaiso's large hand lashed out and grabbed Harumi by the face. Harumi knew that it would take about two seconds to get out of his grip. She didn't have any time though. Dokaiso slammed her head into the unforgiving ground, the ground cracking beneath the pressure exerted from the impact. Dokaiso's hand didn't leave her face though, he lifted the Saiyan woman up and blasted her with a kick. Harumi's body skipped like a stone would on the surface of a pond. With a grunt, Harumi flipped herself and grinded her feet into the ground, in order to stop herself. Her battle instincts came alive. Harumi put her arms up in a defensive formation, effectively blocking the kick from Akumiera, that was aimed to take her head off. Harumi leapt back, Ki surged violently in her hands. Back off me, Harumi shouted, she ran at Akumiera fast, so fast she appeared to be a blur. Appearing in front of the other female Saiyan, Harumi was about to unleash her key attack when she was blindsided by Dokaiso. Dokaiso had shoulder tackled Harumi, her body slammed against the wall of the space pod chamber. The Saiyan mother hacked out blood and fell down the wall with a groan. Her eyes closed and her breathing heavy. Damn these two are tough. I've got to think of something quick, Harumi thought, she could hear the two approaching. They were walking towards her like they were taking a simple stroll. Akumiera grabbed Harumi's chin and lifted up her head to face her. Look at this Dokaiso, a woman that was once considered the strongest female Saiyan has been reduced to nothing. Akumiera mocked and to add insult to injury she slapped Harumi. Maybe after killing you and the supposed prophecy child, I should go back to General Ryu and claim him as my mate. I could never see what he saw in you anyway. Maybe because she's more powerful than you Akumiera, a male voice said stopping both Akumiera and Dokaiso cold. Turning around slowly, they seen the pissed off look of General Ryu. And I actually love my mate, believe it or not. Ryu wore armor that wasn't Saiyan like in nature, it was crimson plated steel armor with matching arm and shin guards. Ryu wore black jeans underneath that while fit him perfectly was also flexible enough for him to use in combat. Pristined steel toed boots as black as the night sky rested on his feet. On his back was strapped a sword and from what stories told, the blade could cut through flesh with no problems. Ryu had a longer version of his son's hair but just as spiky. To Harumi, Ryu was a kind-hearted Saiyan but could have the attitude of a typical Saiyan male and he was always hungering for battle. That's what really attracted the two warriors together, Harumi and Ryu shared a love for battle and they both loved one another because while they were warriors they could be compassionate at the same time. J. General Ryu. Dokaiso stuttered, he quickly bowed his head and got on one knee. Akumiera was about to mimic Dokaiso but her head was roughly grabbed by Harumi. Don't turn your back on me, Harumi shouted while gather key in her pupils. She opened her eyes and fired twin key beams that pierced Akumiera's skull. Akumiera let out a silent scream as the beams passed through her head, piercing her brain and effectively killing her. Harumi panted before letting go of Akumiera's corpse. Both Ryu and Dokaiso didn't even spare the corpse a glance. Harumi? Yes love? Let's go get little Naruto, it's time to take him home, Ryu said and Harumi noted. But, 
Dot but General Ryu. Dokaiso protested. What about the profi? Dot act. Dokaiso's statement was cut off by Ryu, who delivered a sharp chop to the back of Dokaiso's neck. He had moved so quickly that Dokaiso didn't even have time to register it. Dokaiso slumped to the ground and laid motionless. You go on ahead, I will take care of these two, Ryu stated, without even turning to look at Akumiera's corpse. Ryu fired off a key blast. The crimson key blast instantly incinerated Akumiera's body. Ryu watched as Dokaiso struggled to his feet, he hadn't hit him to where it would knock him out but it would definitely leave the Saiyan with a nasty headache. Thank you Ryu, Harumi said with a smile, she was about to leave before her husband's next words stopped her. Don't thank me love, just doing my job, Harumi didn't know why but that phrase he said, it just sounded weird. Shaking her head, Harumi went inside the space pod chamber. Me, Naruto. Harumi called out as she entered the room where they kept the space pods. The roof to the room was open and she could see the night sky. Thankfully, there was no full moon out tonight. Naruto, who had been laying in his mother's space pod, smiled when he heard his mother's voice. Mommy! Naruto shouted, jumping out of the space pod. Mother and son ran at one another, ready to embrace one another after what felt like an eternity. The two drew closer and closer. Squelch. Naruto's onyx eyes widened at the sight his eyes were taking in and he felt something warm splash on his face. Naruto's small hands trembled as he lifted them and dabbed at the warm liquid. He retracted his hand and stared in horror at what was on his hand. It was blood, more specifically, his mother's blood. Harumi glanced down, piercing her chest was a familiar steel sword. Even though she knew whose sword it was, she refused to believe it though. Harumi cried out as the wielder of the sword actually lifted her up and she could feel herself being further impaled by the sword. Harumi cried out, globs of blood flying out her mouth and dribbling down her chin. The wielder of the sword actually threw Harumi off his blade and across the room. Harumi's body bounced off the wall of the room. Naruto couldn't believe it. Dad? Naruto's eyes spilled tears as he gazed at his mom's attacker. Her attacker was indeed her own husband and the father of Naruto. General Ryu. Standing behind Ryu was a banged up Dokaiso. Why? Dot why did you attack mommy? Naruto shouted. Ryu said nothing, his eyes piercing his sons. You. Dot you bastard, Naruto shouted, his golden tail flailed in anger behind him. Naruto then decided to do the very unintelligent thing and actually rush at Ryu. Ryu glanced at Dokaiso sharply, who noted, a message passing between the two. Ryu simply lifted his hand and pointed it at the anger and grief-stricken Naruto, his only son. Naruto's rush was halted as an invisible force slammed into him, the young Saiyan felt the ground leave him and he flew back. Naruto actually crashed back into his mother's space pod, his hand accidentally hitting a button. The button activated the door, the door of the space pod closed and effectively sealed him inside. Naruto's head was ringing and his vision was blurred but he could make out the form of his father approaching him. Naruto's anger and grief were replaced by fear, he had no doubt his father could easily rip off the door and get to him. So this is the great child of the prophecy, Naruto heard his father mutter. He could hear clear disappointment in his father's tone. I expected better honestly. There it was again, Naruto noticed. He had been called some prophecy child two or three times now. What did that mean? What prophecy was made about him? Father, what prophecy? Why are you doing this? Naruto cried out within the pod. It's true, you don't know about the prophecy that told of your arrival. The Oso savior of the Saiyans. Ryu mocked, he kneeled down and stared at his son. There was no emotion that passed on Ryu's face, just a blank slate practically. No warmth, regret, hate or love, pure nothingness. Our kind, the Saiyans, as you know are a proud warrior race. We live to fight and to test our strength against worthy adversaries. We spare nobody when we fight, no matter the age or gender, Ryu said. A few hundred years ago, Dokaiso began to pick up where Ryu left off. A group of Saiyans didn't exactly follow our ideals and they split themselves away from us. Our side didn't take their departure too well, so they were attacked and slaughtered. Only a few managed to escape the massacre of the soon-to-be rebel Saiyans. Ever since then we have been at war, the Saiyan race divided in two, Ryu continued. Ten years after the war started, 
a great Saiyan elder had a prophecy given to him. He foretold of a child being born with a golden tail and that child would grow into untold power. He would fight along with the pure-hearted Saiyans, bring them to victory and unite the Saiyan race once more. Ever since the prophecy was given, everyone was given orders by the king to exterminate the child should he actually appear. And here you are, Dokaiso grinned. Naruto trembled at the grin being sent his way. Was he about to die? Were they really going to kill him over some foolish elder's story? You don't know how easy it would be to kill you right now, Ryu stated before a small grin etched its way on his face. But where's the fun in that? Ryu then began to walk over to the launching pad and began typing away on the panel that was next to it. Um what are you doing general? Dokaiso asked. I'm giving our little friend here a chance to grow stronger, to maybe be some sort of threat to us in the future. Ryu's small smile grew into an insane looking grin. The look only a total madman would have. Just think of it Dokaiso. To test the power of the so-called savior of the Saiyans one day. Just thinking about it sends excitement running through my very bones. With that being said, he pressed one more button on the panel. Twenty seconds till launch, Naruto heard a female voice from within the pod. Naruto stared at his father with complete shock, he was going to send him away somewhere? Daddy please. Naruto pleaded as his father returned before him and knelt down. Ryu tapped on the glass mockingly. If you hate the fact that I hurt your mother, use that as a motivation to become stronger, Ryu said. Fifteen seconds. If you want to get back at me, to kill me, you'll need much more power than this. Come back and face me the day you've acquired real power. The day you actually turn into a warrior and not some sniveling brat. Ryu shouted. Naruto could only slink back into the chair, trying as hard as he could to be as far away from Ryu as possible. Ten seconds remaining. Don't listen to him Naruto. Everyone looked to see Harumi struggling to look at her son. She smiled a bloody smile. Don't let vengeance rule your life my son. Make sure Ryu Tami's words don't poison your mind. Harumi then grunted as Dokaiso kicked her. Watch how you talk to the general me. Harumi looked at her son, for what would be the last time. She deeply hated that fact but it was true. She would never see her precious Naruto grow up fall in love or witness any special moments in his life. No matter what my son, I will always love you. Five seconds, I love you too mommy, Naruto whispered. Ryu raised an eyebrow at his son before turning to look at his fallen wife. Quickly charging ki within his palm, he fired a ki blast at Harumi. Harumi didn't even have time to blink at the blast consumed her. Space pod launching, with that being said, the space pod launched and the last image Naruto saw of his mom was her being vaporized. Within moments, the space pod broke through the atmosphere of planet Vegeta and went out into space. The only sounds being made was the crying of a Saiyan child that had just witnessed the death of his mother. Mech's weeks had passed and the space pod activated its hibernation mode which put the rider inside the pod into a deep sleep. And Naruto was effectively sleeping. By the way his face was scrunched up, it looked like he was dreaming. Little did the sleeping Saiyan child know that he was approaching a planet. A planet that would definitely test this child and possibly make him into the warrior his traitorous father wanted him to be. Arriving at planet Ninjutu, the land of fire has been a witness to many important events that lay shrouded in the history of the elemental nations. Two events being the first and second Great Shinobi War. Now it was in the middle of the third Great Shinobi War. Another event was the legendary battle between Uchiha Madara and Senju Hashirama, two shinobi of godlike power who had founded the epicenter of Hai no Kuni. This epicenter is known as Konohagakure, the village hidden in the leaves. The very village founded on the beliefs of two friends that were as close as brothers, eventually turned into enemies. But this story isn't taking place in Konoha, well not yet at least. Over the skies of Hai no Kuni, a Saiyan pod was traveling at great speeds, Civilians and passing shinobi below couldn't identify what exactly it was that was ripping through the skies, they just hoped it wasn't an attack from an enemy village. All they seen was the mysterious object disappearing beyond the horizon and towards the wilderness. The Saiyan space pod though, while traveling at great speeds was on an unknown collision course with one of the many mountains that stood tall in the forests. The mountain barely shook when the space pod collided with it, though it was chipped. The space pod was now stuck within the side of the mountain and it seemed it would be staying there for some time. Destination arrived, Planet Ninjutu, the computerized voice of the space pod said. 
Deactivating hibernation mode. With that being said, the door to the space pod opened and the warmth of the sun began to flood within the small space traveling vehicle. The young Saiyan child inside, Naruto felt the warmth of the sun lay upon his skin. His eyes began to flutter open and Naruto let out a small yawn. Rubbing the sleep out of his eyes, Naruto looked out before him and seen the sea of luscious green trees below. Where am I? Naruto muttered, he peeked his head out around the corner of the pod and seen nothing but wilderness. Grabbing the remote to the pod and summoning his key, Naruto leapt out of the pod and hovered in front of his spacecraft. Naruto began trying to gather his thoughts, trying to remember what happened to himself. It only took a few moments before his memories hit him like a slap to the face. The battle on planet Vegeta, the arrival of his mother, his bastard father's betrayal and the death of his mom. Oh yeah. Naruto muttered distastefully, his mood turned sour now that the memories were brought up. Now that he remembered what happened, the only problem now was, where was he? Where did that bastard Ryu send him? For a moment, Naruto considered using the space pod to travel back into space and leave the planet. But that idea was quickly dismissed there was nowhere he could go in space and he had no food at all. Concentrating, Naruto could pick up the sounds of animals in the forests below him so that meant food wasn't going to be too big of an issue. So what was he supposed to do now? If you want to get back at me, to kill me, you'll need much more power than this. His father's voice echoed through his mind. Come back and face me the day you've acquired real power. Naruto's fists clenched as he remembered his former father insulting words, they damaged his adolescent Saiyan pride. That's what he would do, he would begin his training to get stronger and acquire the power to one day face his father in battle and crush him beneath his feet. Don't let vengeance rule your life, my son, the familiar voice of his mother shouted in his mind. He almost said her name out loud but then he remembered that voice was from his memories. Naruto was conflicted, while he wanted nothing but to gain new strength and one day defeat Ryu Teme, he also didn't want to go against his mother's final wishes. His mother had been the most important woman in his life he had never disobeyed her. Naruto then noticed another dilemma, he didn't have a scouter in the ship so how would be able to know if an enemy was near or how powerful they were. Here he was, a stranded young Saiyan child on an unknown planet with just the clothes on his back, he would have to survive anyway he could and to start, he would have to set up a base of operations. Then he would start his training, he would get stronger physically and mentally. Suddenly a massive rumble echoed through the sky, it was so powerful it vibrated off the mountains and could have been heard from miles away. Naruto blushed slightly, a small grin etching its way on his face. I think it's time to get you some food first huh, Mr. Stomach? Naruto laughed, summoning his key. The Saiyan child blasted off down towards the woods. Nothing but a crimson streak that mixed with the beautiful forest below. Me. Two weeks later, the sun was beginning to rise. The wildlife predators all began to wake up and begin their hunt for their daily food. While the forest inhabited much beautiful vegetation and wildlife, it was also the new home of Saiyan child named Naruto. Naruto had changed a bit in the two weeks he had been living in the forest. He had left his hoodie back at his new home and was only wearing his protective under armor and shorts. His gold tail was flailing in the wind for all to see. Naruto's onyx eyes were narrowed as they were set upon his prey. That prey just happened to be a massive tiger that was running for its life. Earlier it had set its eyes upon Naruto and thought him nothing more than his next tasty meal. Oh how the tables have turned and the hunter has become the hunted. Naruto was enjoying the chase and he knew he could catch the tiger at any time. Well Mr. Tiger, it's been fun but I'm getting hungrier. With that, Naruto powered up, his body shrouded in a crimson key and with that, he vanished. The tiger looked back and noticed the crazed child that had been chasing it was gone. The tiger was about to let out a breath of relief before its senses went high alert. Slowing turning its head, the massive predator came face to face with his own predator, a smiling child. Naruto smirked, his hand lashed out and he karate chopped the tiger's neck. The animal went limp and fell on the soft ground with a thud. Yum! You're going to make a tasty dinner. Naruto smiled slightly. Its meal was now either unconscious or dead and it was time to get the food ready. Grabbing the tiger by its tail, he began to drag it back to his residence. Naruto's residence, well it can't even be considered that actually. His residence was a cave in the side of a mountain by a beautiful lake. The water sparkled as the sun glistened off its surface. 
Now it took a few days of getting used to but he was able to call this cave his home. Walking in the cave, he noticed the freshly chopped wood he had cut this morning with his bare hands and it was placed and ready to be lighted. Pointing two fingers at the wood, Naruto fired a mini key beam at the wood and it erupted in a column of flames. Naruto instantly felt the warmth of the flames and the darkness of the cave was pushed back as the light from the fire intensified. With that said, Naruto began to cook his food. After his meal, he would start his training once again. Me, somewhere else in the woods. Such a beautiful day, a male voice commented. The voice came from a male figure with coal black colored hair that was slightly turning gray, a sign of the man's aging. The man had stubble on his face and brown eyes, on the corner of his eyes were distinctive marks. The man was dressed in simple civilian clothing, a short orange sleeved t shirt with the kanji for hope in the middle. From what the t shirt revealed, it showed the man at least kept himself active and physically fit. He wore black jeans with a chain wrapped around him like a belt. On his feet were comfortable looking sandals. The man seemed to also have a staff of some kind strapped to his back as well. Hum, what's this? The man mused. He had come upon a clearing by a rather beautiful lake and noticed a rather peculiar sight. A child, maybe around the age of 10 or so, with hair as dark as his own and was that a golden monkey tail? Anyway, the child was seemingly practicing katas, throwing punches and kicks at invisible adversaries. The man took notice that the child's form, while not completely awful, was still pretty bad, standing out in the open would get him detected by the child sooner or later, the only reason he hadn't been detected yet was due to the child's surprising focus to his workout. The man leapt up into the trees and used the tree's heavy abundance of leaves to conceal his presence. Now let's see how long this child will last. Day seemingly started to fade quickly until it was evening. The man was impressed, the child had just now finished and was laying on the ground breathing heavily and surprisingly awake. While he had taijutsu skills that could use some major improvement, he was determined and seemed to have a strong will. The man was very impressed with this child. Without warning, Naruto jumped to his feet and shot a key blast at the tree where the man was concealed. The man in the tree's eyes widened at the attack that was coming at him. It wasn't chakra, whatever it was, it was surely dangerous, so the mystery man leapt out of the path of the key blast and landed in a crouch a few feet away from Naruto. The mystery man didn't see it but he heard the tree where he had been moments ago explode in a hail storm of bark and leaves. Naruto eyed the man critically, while I couldn't sense you, I had a feeling of being watched and I couldn't detect where you were. So while I was training I kept my eyes scanning around until I found one ideal hiding spot. Naruto explained which further impressed the mystery man. So tell me, who are you and what is your name? Naruto began to gather ki within his hands, ready to fire off another blast at any given moment. Well child I must say I am indeed impressed, the mystery guy chuckled before raising his hands in a submissive gesture. But I haven't come here to cause harm. My name is Sukuno and I live here in these woods as well child. You do? I've never seen you around before, Naruto questioned. Well how long have you been living in that cave? About two weeks. Then that's why. Sukuno's cheeky comment earned a sweat drop from Naruto. So what's your name? It would be impolite to ask for my name and not give one to me in return? Naruto really didn't care if he would be impolite or not, he was a Saiyan and his race wasn't known for their manners. But then again his mother practically beat manners into him as a child. She didn't want him to grow up like all other Saiyan males. Harumi had always told him he was a special child. My name is Naruto, nice to meet you Naruto, Sukuno smiled. Forgive me if I sound rude but I can't replicate the same feelings. I don't know how you can considering you did just meet me, the Saiyan child said bluntly. Well I'll give the child credit, he isn't afraid to speak what he's feeling, Sukuno thought with a sweat drop before he coughed slightly to regain his composure. Well I guess you could say I'm a friendly person. I'm sure you are, Naruto said before turning his back to Sukuno. Well I'm going back into my home please evacuate the area Sukuno-san. Without another word being said, Naruto began walking towards his cave and was eventually swallowed by the darkness inside. Sukuno was rather put off by the child's attitude as he watched him disappear in the cave. It was obvious something happened to him, Naruto was lacking the regular innocence children his age act, but then again. Naruto might not exactly be the most normal kind of child considering the golden tail he had. Speaking of, 
Sukuno had never heard of a clan that possessed monkey tails or any sort of traits resembling the species. So why exactly did he have one? Sukuno didn't have those answers but he was perfectly aware of one thing. Well then, Sukuno muttered, a smirk growing on his lips. Things are going to be interesting from now on Hanaruto kun. Turning around himself, Sukuno began to make his way out into the woods and back towards his home, formulating a plan to come visit the child tomorrow. Meme. Later that night, in another section of a forest, a simple log cabin sat peacefully, undisturbed by the events of the outside world. A crescent moon hung overhead and shined down over the forest, its intense light mixing with the stars above making it all seem like such a serene scene. Inside the cabin was none other than Sukuno and his wife, Amy, were relaxing by a fire. It seemed the two were deep in conversation. Right now, Sukuno was recalling his meeting with Naruto to his wife. You should have seen the child Amy Chan, Sukuno said, taking a drag on his pipe before exhaling a small cloud of smoke. The child, Naruto was his name, was an interesting one. He trained hours on end and didn't stop till the sun was almost gone. Don't get me wrong, his fighting form was atrocious and needs some improvement, Sukuno muttered. Amy giggled at her husband's muttering and the way he seemed to be in thought, he was such a carefree guy it was kind of funny to see him get serious. Amy had chocolate-colored hair that was placed in pigtails, the brown in her hair was slightly gray as well, signifying her aging as well. She was wearing a white silk woven dress at the moment and comfortable slippers. Her eyes were a vibrant green color. Sounds like an interesting kid you found Sukuno kun. Yeah and then he did something that completely caught me off guard. What did he do? He. Sukuno started out, his mind going on how he should try and explain this. He like threw some sort of chakra beam at me. A chakra beam? At least I think it was chakra. And that's also not even the weirdest part, Sukuno said. There's more? Yes, Naruto even had this golden monkey tail? A golden monkey tail? Amy asked skeptical. Are you messing with me now Sukuno-kun? No I am being completely serious, Sukuno said, his eyes staring directly at his wife's, she could see he was being serious, Amy detected no deception or anything within his eyes. Amy was baffled, a child with a golden monkey tail, how did such a thing occur? She just like her husband had never heard of any clan that was primate-like or have traits of monkey. So where exactly did this child come from? So what's really bugging you about this kid Sukuno kun? You can still read me like an open book even after all these years. Sukuno chuckled, his face showing a brief glimpse of joy before it vanished altogether. Sukuno seemed to age before his wife's eyes and he seemed much more older, a poor man that's just seen too much in his lifetime. He reminds me of him. Sukuno whispered softly. Memories flashed through his eyes like a bad motion picture. Memories from a time not so long ago that seemingly haunt him. The ghosts of Sukuno's past. Amy winced slightly at that. She should have known that was the reason he took special interest in the kid. What happened to him wasn't your fault, Sukuno kun. He chose that path and you must let him walk it alone. You may be right, Amy chan, Sukuno muttered, staring into the fireplace and watched as the orange flames danced within its confinement. But it doesn't mean I should have let it happen. Sukuno stood up from his sitting position and stared out into the night. An image of a young teen male with spiky hair of his own seemingly manifested in front of Sukuno's eyes. The teen's eyes were light blue and they seemingly pierced Sukuno's soul. Mamoru was the slight whisper that left Sukuno's lips. It was the whisper of his grandson's name. What's happened to Mamoru is unknown to this very day, only known by the two residents in that log cabin. Me for the next month. Sukuno would come by and give Naruto some company. At first Naruto seemingly ignored his existence being there, wanting nothing to do with the man. But that all changed when Sukuno had brought Naruto some food and a new change of clothes. Now the best way to get on a Saiyan's good side is definitely through their stomach and needless to say, Naruto began to open up to Sukuno little by little. So far he's only told Sukuno his age. That he's an orphan and a little about his favorite things to do which include training, eating, fighting and hunting. He also explained to Sukuno that he wasn't using that strange energy they referred to as chakra but he was using ki. Now that left Sukuno flabbergasted, he had thought the art of ki was forever lost when the samurai fell. 
Sure there were still samurai around but they gave up the use of ki for chakra because of its wide variety of techniques and while not being as dangerous as ki is just as flexible. Sukuno watched as Naruto continued to battle invisible adversaries, throwing punches, kicks and blocks at opponents only his eyes could see. Sukuno knew the boy had potential, he had an abundance of that. However if he kept training the way he was, Sukuno believed he wouldn't improve at all. Sukuno decided he would truly test the child's skills. Hey Naruto! Sukuno called out. The shout actually broke the child from his training. Yes Sukuno! Naruto asked, wondering why he had interrupted his training. I was just thinking. He began while scratching his chin as if contemplating his next few words. How you would like to spar with me? Really? Naruto asked before a small smirk crawled its way onto his lips. Are you sure Sukuno? You're getting quite old, I wouldn't want you to break anything. Little brat, no respect. Sukuno grumbled in annoyance. Don't worry I'm sure you won't even land one punch. Sukuno challenged. What? Naruto shouted. His temper flaring and his ki responded to his drastic shift in emotion. His body was encircled by a crimson aura. I'll show you. With a battle cry. The young Saiyan child blasted towards Sukuno. Sukuno narrowed his eyes, he began to calculate the child before him. It seems Naruto was easily angered especially when you taunted his fighting capabilities or his pride. Sukuno pushed away Naruto's oncoming fist and ducked as he tried to kick him. Sukuno sent forth a punch of his own, Naruto crossed his arms in a blocking formation and intercepted the punch. The force behind the punch though still knocked Naruto back, growling, Naruto raced back at him and Sukuno met him in the charge. Both began to rain down attacks on one another, a blur to normal civilian eyes. Kicks, punches and blocks were exchanged as the two specks fought all over the area. To anyone who was actually watching though, they could tell the smaller speck, aka Naruto, was having a much harder time trying to land a blow on Sukuno. True to Sukuno's words, so far Naruto hadn't landed one punch on him. From the scuff marks and slight bruising on Naruto's face, Sukuno had definitely landed his blows. Naruto lashed out quickly and tried to catch Sukuno in the face with a kick, Sukuno simply sidestepped and grabbed his outstretched leg. Channeling a small amount of chakra through his arm, Sukuno hoisted Naruto high up in the air and then slammed his body down hard, the ground caving slightly due to the force of the impact. Naruto hacked out a cry of pain. Sukuno reached down and lifted Naruto up by his leg and gave him a friendly smile. You're strong for a child your age Naruto, but you have a long ways to go before you can land a shot on me, much less beat me. Sukuno's smile dropped when he seen Naruto grin. I wouldn't be too sure about that, what happened next completely shocked Sukuno, Naruto began to use his golden tail to attack him. Sukuno maneuvered his head around as the furry appendage kept trying to attack him. He was so focused on dodging Naruto's tail that he failed to notice his grip releasing on Naruto's leg and the Saiyan child was gathering his key. Surprise! Naruto shouted which startled Sukuno and his grip on the boy's leg was gone. Ha! Huh. Still upside down in mid-air, Naruto fired a key blast at Sukuno. The blast collided with Sukuno and his body was lost in a cloud of smoke. Naruto was able to flip in the air and regain his footing. I knew I would be able to hit you, Naruto said. You fell for my trick, as the smoke began to clear, Naruto's smile dropped from his face and replaced with utter confusion. Where Sukuno should have been, there was a burnt piece of wood. What the? Whatever words Naruto was about to say were cut off as Sukuno appeared before him instantly, moving at speeds Naruto couldn't track or even hope to avoid at the moment. Naruto's body hunched forward and a vial of saliva exploded from his mouth as Sukuno drove his knee into his abdomen. Sukuno wasn't finished there, he thrusted his elbow down and it collided with the back of Naruto's skull. The Saiyan child dropped to the ground, groaning. It didn't look like he was going to get back up and continue the spar so Sukuno called it to an end. I must say if it weren't for my quick reflexes and years of experience, you would have hit me with that surprise attack. Nonetheless, I'm impressed with you Naruto. Thanks, Naruto groaned out again, still trying to regain his senses. Sukuno hit hard, how shocked would Naruto have been if he knew that Sukuno had been merely toying around with him? I do have a question though. Hum what is it? How are you so strong Sukuno-san? Oh that's an easy one, I used to be a shinobi. 
Sukuno smiled slightly, while he was glad to have left that life behind. He would admit that the life of a shinobi did have its benefits and he had gotten his fair share of blood-thrilling adventures and missions. While Sukuno began to get lost in his memories, Naruto's face scrunched up in confusion. What's a shinobi? He asked. What is a shinobi? Naruto asked, sitting cross-legged before Sukuno. He had never heard of the term shinobi used before. At first he thought it might have been a kind of food but then Sukuno had said he used to be one and well the man definitely wasn't appetizing. So Naruto believed a shinobi was possibly a warrior of some kind. You don't know what a shinobi is? Sukuno asked. He was relatively surprised that this child wasn't aware of what a shinobi was. But then again Sukuno didn't know Naruto was actually from a whole different planet altogether. Well I guess to explain it, a shinobi is a sort of warrior that defends his home village. You see shinobi are also sent out on missions that will benefit their village. From simple tasks like fixing up somebody's home to high level missions like assassinations and stuff of that nature. And that strange energy you use. Chakra right? Naruto asked trying to remember if that was the correct term. Yes chakra is the thing all shinobi use. What exactly is chakra? Naruto asked. Again Sukuno was stumped. Sure he knew that Naruto was a key user, having already seen the child demonstrate his abilities and explain it himself. But to not know what chakra was, the kid must have been sheltered his whole life. Well chakra is a lot like ki in a way but it's different. While ki is considered as your life force or spiritual energy, chakra is the combination of your physical energy and spiritual energy. Ki is more destructive than chakra, that's its benefit. But the downside to key is the techniques associated with it are limited really while the techniques with chakra are widely vast. Naruto sat there, his golden tail simply swaying in the breeze as he absorbed all this information. Wow this world was something else so far, sure it seemed that most didn't possess key but that didn't seem to be an issue. But that didn't make them any less dangerous. Ryu Teme really had planned ahead when he sent him here, the bastard. So these shinobi, how strong are they Sukuno-san? Naruto asked, he knew that eventually he would run into some, he just needed to know what he was facing. Going into any situation blind, especially in the shinobi world, was just a recipe waiting for disaster. A genin could take on a cage if he or she were underestimated enough. Hmm? Sukuno mused over the question, trying to think of how he would explain it. Well I guess it really depends on the rank of shinobi that you're facing Naruto. Seeing Naruto's blank expression, he decided to elaborate further. You see there's a ranking system when it comes to shinobi and because of their rank some say it determines their strength. First we have a genin, a shinobi just out of the academy and fresh to the shinobi world. After sparring with you, I can tell you that a genin won't give you any issues Naruto-kun. Naruto noted, drinking in the information like a sponge would water. Then we have chunin. They are shinobi that are stronger than genin and have a bit more experience than them, considerably a year or two more. Chunin though can take on missions that genin can't. After chunin, then comes the rank of junin. Junin are dangerous and take mid to high level missions for their village. They are strong and sometimes will be traveling with a squad of genin if they turn out to be a sensei. Now junin are shinobi that you shouldn't mess with Naruto-kun. You're strong but not strong enough to face a junin by yourself. Naruto growled slightly, as a Saiyan he hated to be told who he could and couldn't fight. His race lived for the thrill of a good battle and to test their limits against powerful opponents. But the seriousness in Sukuno's voice told him that he should probably follow his warning. The rank above Junin is Anbu and Special Forces. Anbu are the special forces within the village that take on high level threats and missions. Anbu will even take S rank missions which are very dangerous ones. Anbu are specialized in assassinations and effectively getting a kill no matter the cost. Just like Junin, Naruto avoid them at all costs. Anbu are easily identified for wearing cloaks and masks around the village. Then finally we have the cage of the village or better known as the leader. A cage is the strongest warrior a village has and they lead it to the best of their ability while abiding by the laws set in place since the founding of shinobi villages. Naruto sat quietly absorbing more of the information Sukuno was providing him. The man at the moment was a like a walking encyclopedia for the Saiyan child. While Naruto was thinking, Sukuno was really observing him. The child really didn't have any absolute knowledge of the hidden villages or how the system of shinobi worked. 
Naruto would only give away information that he desired and while Sukuno was sure he could possibly force the information out of him, he didn't want to do that. Naruto was really starting to grow on him, even if he had only known him for about a month. You said villages right Sukuno-san? Getting a nod from the older male, Naruto decided to continue. How many villages are there exactly? First there are the five major shinobi villages, they are the main epicenter of the elemental nations. The major shinobi villages are Sanagakure, the village hidden in the sand. Suna is considered the weakest of the villages due to its low resources and its economy isn't that great. But what it lacks in resources and economically, it makes up in useful terrain against invading forces and other enemies. Then we have Kirigakure, the village hidden in the mist, not much is known about that village except it has a reputation for producing phenomenal swordsmen and can be quite brutal in their methods. Next comes Iwagakure, the hidden stone village, they have an awful economy but they more than make up for that with their military might. Kumogakure, the village hidden in the clouds, they are considered the second strongest shinobi village. And last but certainly not least, we have Konohagakure, the village hidden in the leaves and the strongest shinobi village in all the elemental nations. It has the best economy, military might and plenty of resources for trading to other nations that it's allied with. Plus Konoha is known for producing some of the strongest shinobi that have ever walked the elemental nations. Damn, Naruto muttered. Five major villages and they have strong warriors that he could battle. Even though he was a child, Naruto was definitely developing the same battle lust that any other Saiyan had. Right now though he was controlling it with no problem but as he aged, he knew that it would get worse. Hey Sukuno-san, what rank of shinobi were you before you retired? I was wondering when you would ask that, Sukuno smirked, a gleam entering his eye. Well here let me tell you. Sukuno leaned closer as if to tell him a secret. Yes. The rank that I was before is, yes. What rank were you? Naruto was eager to know just how strong Sukuno actually was. The dramatic flair seemed to increase. A secret? Sukuno answered with a cheeky grin. Naruto's eyes began to twitch in annoyance. A sweat drop dripping from his brow. Suddenly a devious smirk warped its way onto Naruto's lips. Sukuno's cheeky grin died out immediately. Naruto's hands flared with ki energy. Um. Naruto-kun? Sukuno asked. Instead of answering, the ki energy grew brighter, two crimson orbs that promised pain. Run! Was all the Saiyan child said before he began unleashing a volley of ki blasts at Sukuno. The former shinobi yelped and began dodging the crimson orbs of pain. Needless to say though it was going to be a long day for old Sukuno. Me. Later that night. A scruffed up Naruto and a slightly burnt Sukuno could be seen making their way through the woods. After dodging and evading most of Naruto's key attacks, the two once again engaged in a battle. Needless to say from the amount of cuts and bruises on Naruto and the few burn marks on Sukuno, it was easy to tell who won that little confrontation. But during it, Sukuno noticed something right away. Naruto had been doing a lot better than he had previously. Now while Sukuno wasn't that much of a censor, he could almost feel the young child had gotten stronger, somehow. Not incredibly stronger, only slightly but it was impressive nonetheless. Naruto was carrying some massive salmon over his shoulder while Sukuno was following behind him with his own food he had caught slung on his back. He had stored some firewood in a seal on his wrist, he was no expert in sealing like that Uzumaki clan but he knew some basic seals. It took only an hour before the two arrived at Sukuno's residence. Naruto had to admit it was definitely a lot nicer than the place he was staying in. Then again, his residence was a cave in the side of a mountain with the only beautiful thing in sight was the crystal clear lake and the bit of aquatic life that resided within its depths. Amy-chan. I'm back and I've brought a guest. Sukuno shouted. Naruto's ears picked up the sound of footsteps on wooden floor make their way to the front door of the cabin. The Saiyan child watched as a beautiful middle-aged woman stepped through the front door. Amy gave her husband a dazzling smile. Sukuno kun Welcome home. Amy smiled lovingly at her husband before turning to Naruto. And who is this adorable young man? She asked with a smile, though she already had a pretty good idea. Naruto blushed slightly and internally scowled. He was a Saiyan dammit. He wasn't supposed to be blushing, but he wasn't used to such compliments except from his late mother and he was a child. Giving the woman a slight bow. My name is Naruto, nice to meet you Amy-san. 
And he has manners too, Amy said. Observing the child, he was definitely all that Sukuno made him out to be. Even down to the golden tail that she could see was firmly wrapped around his waist. Yeah and he helped me bring home dinner too. Do you mind if he eats with us tonight? Sukuno asked with pleading eyes. Amy chuckled to herself, her husband could be so childish sometimes. Just don't forget, tomorrow you have to go into town and pick up supplies. Okay love, Sukuno said with a big grin, nothing else needed to be said as Naruto and Sukuno began preparing the food. Naruto couldn't wait to dig in and the rumbling from his stomach told him the same thing. Amy was in the house cutting up vegetables. Within the hour, a full course meal was served. Now while it looked big enough to feed a large family, Sukuno didn't know the frightening extent of a growing Saiyan's appetite, he was about to learn. As the night dragged on both Sukuno and Amy watched in utter horror as Naruto was causing a massacre. Food was disappearing so fast, one moment it was there and the next it wasn't. Amis' eyes were widened to comical proportions while Sukuno had to keep his jaw from dropping. After finishing off the last of the roasted chicken and chunks of fish, Naruto belched and patted his belly with a goofy smile. Ah that was yummy. Wow. Sukuno muttered. The kid sure has an appetite, where does he put it all? Amy nodded her head numbly, still processing the scene that had taken place before her eyes. Naruto heard Sukuno's comment and snorted. That's one of the best things about being a Saiyan. Naruto stated with a proud smile. A Saiyan? Amy stated, finally breaking out of her daze. What's a Saiyan? I don't believe I've ever heard of that clan. That's because the Saiyans aren't a clan, we are a race of warriors from a distant planet. The planet Vegeta. We Saiyans live for a good fight, we thrive on the thrill of battling strong opponents. Oh really? Amy giggled, thinking he was playing some sort of joke on her. Meanwhile Sukuno stayed quiet, listening intently. And tell us more about you Saiyans. Naruto raised an eyebrow, this woman was taking this information a lot better than he thought. She either didn't believe him or possibly had seen much crazier things in her lifetime, Naruto chucked it up to the first suggestion. Currently we Saiyans are at war with one another. Keep in mind as a warrior race, Saiyans are supposed to be brutal and battle-hardened creatures. But long ago, a group of Saiyans with pure hearts decided they didn't like the way the rest of the race acted and split apart from us. We've been fighting each other ever since. So then why are you here Naruto? If you're from a different planet, then why did the rest of your race send you here? Do they send all the kids away to avoid battle? Sukuno asked. No, Naruto's eyes hardened which the former shinobi took notice of. Apparently some old coot of a Saiyan elder was given a prophecy. He said that one day a savior would be born and he would fight against the evil Saiyans, eventually reuniting us all together. The elder said the biggest sign of the savior would be the fact he was born with a golden tail. So Naruto-kun, are you the savior the elder spoke of? Amy asked, watching as he unwrapped his golden appendage from around his waist. The Saiyan child sighed while running a hand through his messy onyx hair. I don't know Amy-san. I think the prophecy itself is complete garbage but it seemed the prophecy was enough to conjure fear in the other Saiyans. Because as soon as the prophecy was given, the king decided almost every Saiyan on font with massive power levels or any sign of gold in their tails were to be eliminated, Naruto recalled. He remembered his mother talking with her friend about this. Apparently the king got very paranoid, not wanting his power to be disrupted by some prophesied child, so he decided any threat to his power was to be killed. That's horrible, Amy said, her face now sporting a frown. This joke wasn't funny anymore. She watched the range of emotions playing on Naruto's face as he was thinking, maybe there was more to this than she believed. We're not even at the worst part, Naruto said and both heard a certain hollowness begin to creep its way into his voice. My father is a Saiyan general, a very powerful warrior in the Saiyan army. I'll get back to that bastard in a second. Recently my mother had become increasingly worried about the war and when she noticed my golden tail. I guess she wanted to have us evacuate the planet. Me and her were ambushed but my father saved us, Venom could be clearly heard dripping from his voice, if they didn't know any better, he could be part snake too. Turns out, father had different plans than a happy family ending, he ended up killing my mom and sent me here, Naruto finished, small tears prickling at his eyes. Amy gasped while Sukuno kept quiet for a second. What kind of father would do that to their child? 
sure their world had cruel people like that but it was still devastating to hear especially for a child his age to experience. Minutes passed and everyone remained silent, only sound that could be heard was from the nocturnal animals outside. So what are you going to do now Naruto? Sukuno asked. Do what any self-righteous Saiyan would do. Train, get stronger and defeat my father and make him pay for what he's done to me and my mother. Naruto-kun, I understand why you want to do this but don't let revenge fill your heart okay. Amy said making the Saiyan child's eyes widen slightly, remembering the same words his mother said to him. Revenge is like a poison and it can corrupt the best of us, she said wisely, showing the wisdom for her age. She's right Naruto. Sukuno sat up and Amy noticed how serious he looked, she had only seen this look during his time as a shinobi. I've decided if you're going to face this, father, of yours and I use the term, father, loosely. You'll have to get stronger. And since he's your dad I can assume he also has access to ki. Naruto nodded his head. Then I have no doubt your dad also is more experienced and stronger in the use of ki. I can't help you with that, you'll have to get stronger with ki on your own. Sukuno began to smile. But I can train you in other aspects. You. Naruto whispered, shocked that Sukuno was offering to train him. You're offering to train me. Yes, yes I am. Are you sure you're going to train him, Sukuno kun? Amy asked. Yeah, you're an old man. Do you think you're up for it? Naruto joked, earning a bonk on the head from the enraged former shinobi. Naruto rubbed his cranium, trying to soothe the stinging sensation. Disrespectful brat. Sukuno muttered. Tomorrow I have to leave into town for supplies. Looks like you'll be coming with me Naruto and we will pick out stuff to begin your training. Naruto wanted to ask why. He wanted to know why this man who hadn't known him for over two months were willing to do such a thing for him. Naruto himself had never done anything kind for Sukuno, just playfully disrespected him and assault him with a barrage of key attacks. Why Sukuno-san? Why would you do so much for me? Because you remind me of somebody just like you Naruto. He was brash, hard-headed and a bit disrespectful. But he grew up to be somebody powerful and amazing. He made the wrong choices though which lead him into a bit of trouble and he had to face the consequences for his actions. Sukuno said, his voice started off strong and then toned itself down to a whisper. Who was this person? Naruto asked. Amy watched as her husband was going through an internal conflict. She would help ease his troubles later. That's a story for another time Naruto. Now there is no need for you to go sleeping in that awful cave of yours so you can take the guest bedroom for the night. Thanks Sukuno-san. Naruto smiled. He couldn't believe this man that he had barely gotten to know was doing so much for him. It was very nice and the Saiyan child made a promise he would pay him back someday. No need to thank me brat. Now go on and get some sleep. We got a big day tomorrow. Me. The next day. Sukuno and Naruto were walking to the nearby town. Naruto had offered to fly them there but Sukuno refused. Nothing wrong with a good walk and a bit of nature observing. Was his exact words. It didn't take them more than an hour to arrive by foot and they could hear the hustle and bustle of everyday life. It wasn't a massive town, it was small but the people looked genuinely happy, like they didn't have a care in the world. Sukuno figured they were lucky. Well where should we start first Sukuno-san? Naruto asked keeping his golden tail wrapped firmly around his waist, he didn't want to frighten the other civilians. On the other hand it would be pretty funny to see their faces pale slightly at seeing his tail, he might entertain the idea later. We're going to start out with going to the local weapons shop. This might not be a shinobi village but it's one of the trading villages associated with Konohagakure, so it has some pretty decent supplies. And what exactly are you planning to buy? Weights and a weapon. They will be chakra weights and since you don't have chakra, I'll be the one having to keep on increasing them when things get too light for you. Weights will increase your speed and strength by bounds if done correctly. I'm getting you a weapon because while I can see you could pulverize an enemy with your fists and key attacks, it doesn't hurt to know how to handle a weapon in the case of an emergency. The duo found the weapons shop, Kunai's weapon shop. Both Saiyan and Shinobi walked in and could see the various weapons lining the walls. From swords to small knives, Naruto could see metal throwing stars. The man behind the weapons counter looked to be older than Sukuno. He had a bit of a long white beard and wrinkles adorned his face. But two chocolate orbs that were warm and welcoming to all that seen them. Sukuno san. How have you been? The man asked with a smile. I've been good Hideo. Sukuno said. 
how has the family been? Oh the little grandchildren cause such a havoc sometime but they're young so it's to be expected, and I visit my wife every once in a while when I have the chance, Kami rest her soul. Hideo's eyes traveled from Sukuno to Naruto. And who's this little guy? This little guy's name is Naruto. Naruto stated with a frown. He always hated the fact he was kind of short, not as big as the other Saiyan children his age. It wasn't his fault damn it, he would grow and be big someday. And we're here to buy him some chakra weights and a weapon, Sukuno said, noticing the small frown and add that with Naruto's temper, well he didn't want the small alien child to cause havoc. Is he training to be a shinobi? We haven't decided that but maybe? Well take a look around and tell me what you like, Hideo smiled before he disappeared into the back of the shop. Sukuno went and found the weights while Naruto was looking for a weapon. He didn't really want to use a sword, his father had always taken a liking to swords as his own weapon and Naruto wanted no association with the man. Not even when it came to weapons. Eventually Naruto did find something that piqued his interest, it looked to be a durable staff of some kind. Naruto reached out and grabbed it, it felt slightly heavy but easy to hold. He gave it a slight twirl and it felt good in his hands. Hey Sukuno-san, I found something that I want, Naruto called out. Moments later, Sukuno walked over with the chakra weights in hand. A staff? Sukuno asked. I do know a bit of bojutsu but not a lot. I'm more of a kenjutsu fighter, if you're serious about fighting with a staff I'll have to call in a favor, he laughed. Sukuno and Naruto walked up and began paying for their much needed supplies. Hideo was leading them to the door, talking with Sukuno a bit before all three heard a female scream. The scream was followed by loud obnoxious male cheers. Hideo sighed. Oh no here we go again, what's wrong Hideo? Sukuno asked. It's these pesky bandits that have been showing up for the past month, nobody in town is strong enough to stop them. I would teach them a lesson or two but we both know I'm far past fighting anymore. He said glumly. Hideo wasn't in the shape to fight anymore, he used to be a strong shinobi in his prime but after an injury he was forced to retire. He had been running the weapons shop ever since, if he couldn't be a shinobi, he would at least give some help to the future generation. They sound like a real pain in the ass, Sukuno said with a small growl. Yeah there, Hideo agreed before he noticed something. Hey where is Naruto-kun? Sukuno's eyes widened before he looked out the window of the weapon shop. Sure enough our favorite Saiyan child was making his way to the disturbance that the bandits were causing. There was going to be trouble, and trouble there definitely was. Hey let my mommy go. A child about the age of seven called out. He sniffled while tears leaped out of his eyes. These horrible men were hurting his mother and there was nothing he could do about it. The man who was holding the child's mother cast his beady eyes towards the child and gave him a rather sick grin. Ah don't worry kid, we're just having a bit of fun with your mommy here, the rather round bandit said, his grin getting even wider. She did always teach you to share didn't she? The man had a tight grip on the woman's hair and he pulled slightly, his action got the mother to whimper a bit. His question was met with laughter from the rest of the crew of bandits. They seem to be enjoying themselves at the moment, the sick bastards. I don't care what happens to me, the woman said, her eyes shined with defiance as she stared at the ugly bandit. Just leave my little boy alone. She was smacked by her captor. I don't believe I remember giving you permission to talk, the bandit roared while the others voiced their agreement. All the other villagers were frightened and giving the woman and child a look of pity. They knew they couldn't stop these bandits, they didn't have the skills to combat them. It seemed there was no hope for the mother and child. Damn you or one ugly man. A child's voice rang out through the crowd. Or maybe there was hope after all. Who the fuck said that? The round bandit shouted in fury. His eyes glancing furiously amongst the civilians. He couldn't wait to find the little bastard who dared talk to him in such a way. In his fury he actually let go of the woman and she and her child took off into the crowd of civilians. I did. Over here. The bandit turned around and found himself standing just a few feet away from our favorite Saiyan child, Naruto. Some of the bandits were slightly shocked, wondering how this child got past them without any of them noticing. And you kinda smell as well. Naruto pinched his nose mockingly, watching as the round bandit's eyes were practically melting with fury. You think you're funny don't you huh? The bandit stalked forward menacingly expecting the child to scamper away, yet he stood his ground. 
I'm going to flatten you here and now little shit. Naruto scoffed, honestly offended by how this fool thought he could beat him. Well round bandit-san, I feel insulted that you actually think you can beat me. But by all means, try it. Naruto didn't even raise his fists in preparation for a fight, he did something that surprised everyone. He yawned. Oh and your mom is so fat that she beeps when she backs up. I'll kill you. The bandit rushed Naruto, fully ready to kill the kid that dare insult him and his mother. The bandit unleashed a right punch, waiting to see how it cracks the boy's face. His blood slightly runs cold when Naruto simply catches it. Naruto shook his head slightly before pushing the fist ASID. Try again round bandit San. Thinking the little bastard got lucky, the foolish bandit rushed Naruto again and began attacking with rights and lefts. Naruto simply leaned to the side or pushed the punches away from him. The Saiyan child could hear the other bandits cheering their friend on, yeah a group of grown men were cheering their fully grown buddy on to fight a child. Sure the child was actually a Saiyan and considered the prophesied savior of his race but the other civilians didn't know that. It was kind of sad really especially when the round bandit got so tired he was panting and sweat dripped from his meaty brow. Well this was no fun, Naruto commented dryly, before his opponent could retort that statement, Naruto drove his fist into the round bandit's gut. The bandit felt like he got smashed in the gut with a boulder, the impact was strong to where he was launched off his feet and actually crashed into some of his friends, causing a bit of a pile up of bodies. Naruto heard growls coming from around him and looked to see the man's buddies closing in on him with weapons. Naruto cracked his knuckles in anticipation while the crowd of civilians were watching, stunned at what just happened. Well if you're not as strong as your buddy there, then you men and I use that term loosely, might as well turn around and run in the other direction. Trust me you don't want any of this, Naruto said, a sly smile making its way on his face. That's all that needed to be said and the bandits all rushed him. All calling for his blood. I warned them, Naruto thought. The next few moments were a blur, Naruto dodging and evading weapons while retaliating with a flurry of punches and kicks. Bandits were flying everywhere and the civilians of the town couldn't believe their eyes that a small child was single handedly beating the bandits that have been terrorizing their town. Naruto's fist smashed into the face of one unlucky bandit, sending him off his feet and off to who knows where. The child's senses went on alert. He ducked as a sword tried to decapitate him. Twisting on his feet, Naruto's foot lashed out and kicked the sword wielder in the gut and effectively taking him out of the fight. Naruto grabbed another bandit's fist and swung him around before throwing him at his buddies causing another pileup. The bandits couldn't believe it, they were being tossed and beaten around by some child. It was infuriating. They all rushed him once more, hoping to dogpile on him and finish the child off while he was on the ground. Naruto though could tell what they wanted to do and smirked. Valiant effort but foolish nonetheless, gathering minuscule amounts of ki within his palms he prepared his attack. Naruto decided against killing the bandits, it would just be easier to bruise their pride and let them leave. No need to shed any blood today. Naruto threw his hands forward and a shockwave of ki slammed into the charging bandits. The bandits felt a massive force smack into them and just like their other companions, they too took flight. Some crashed into walls, others through windows and Naruto was sure one landed in a pond somewhere because he heard a distant, splashing, sound. Nonetheless, the bandits were alive and groaning in pain and probably humiliation. A few minutes passed and the bruised bandits picked themselves up and looked at Naruto with hate but decided against attacking him. We've got to go and bring the boss here, one bandit muttered. He's going to kill us for this you know, another said. It doesn't matter as long as he puts this little brat down once and for all. Naruto with his enhanced hearing picked up the conversation. If this boss of yours is so tough then bring him here. I'll beat him till he's black and blue and send him on his way just like I did with you guys. Naruto pounded his fist in his hand for emphasis. We will see you little shit, the round bandit from earlier said. He finally recovered and stood at the front of the group. Our leader will be here and this town will burn for your actions. With those final words, the round bandit and his friends took off out of town. The villagers waited till they were out of sight before letting out massive cheers. As the villagers celebrated, Naruto's eyes were narrowed upon the road the bandits took to exit the village, seeing if they might try to return. It seems they were serious with their threat, the familiar voice of Sukuno said. Naruto resisted the urge to flinch, 
The Saiyan child was slightly startled by Sukuno's impressive speed. The man had not been there moments ago and now here he was, standing next to him like he had been there the whole time. It was truly a testament to how fast his new sensei was. It seems that way, Naruto stated. I'm not afraid though, if their boss is so tough then I'll just have to humble him before sending him packing. I'd be careful Naruto. For all we know their boss is a shinobi and you have yet to truly experience what chakra can do, Sukuno said and Naruto couldn't deny that statement. All he knew so far about chakra was it was the energy all shinobi used to perform amazing things. Controlling the elements, cloning oneself, creating illusions and so much more. Naruto wasn't afraid though, he had his key to back him up and he was a saiyan, he refused to run away from a battle. That may be true Sukuno san, but that's why you're my sensei and you can train me. And we both know I would have to battle a shinobi eventually. That's true, Sukuno muttered. If I had to estimate, I would say their camp is close by since I know bandits don't like to travel too far from their base of operations and that means their leader is too. Tonight they will lick their wounds as they report back to camp about their failure. So I'll assume their leader will be showing up in about three days. We have very little time to get you some training in. But I think we can manage something, he smirked. Let's do this, Naruto said with his own grin, ready to start his training despite how little time they had. One day might seem like a lot of time but when preparing for this upcoming confrontation, it was very little. Tonight they would celebrate with the villagers. A celebration meant a lot of food and that was a very pleasing idea for one Saiyan child. Me, that night, the bandits were bowed in front of their leader. They had just returned and reported the incident to their leader and was now waiting to see what he had planned for them. The leader sat on a wooden throne with animal skin behind him, making him seem like royalty. He had dull white hair, gray eyes and adorning his face was gray facial stubble. And he was dressed in black under armor with white shoes. Above his armor he was wearing what looked to be royal robes. A child you say? The man said while rubbing the stubble on his face. Yes sir, the round bandit answered, his head bowed and not staring at the man. His master could definitely be frightening and he knew that he hated failure above anything else. Did you get the name of the child? No Levesky Sama? The now named Levesky snorted, then quicker than the bandit could ever hope to track, a kanai was launched from beneath his robes and was now lodged in the bandit's skull. The other bandits almost cowered away in fear as the fat bandit fell to the floor, dead. I don't tolerate failure and you idiots were defeated, his grey eyes seemed to glow with anger, defeated by a child nonetheless. Fine I will go visit this child and then the town will burn, Levesky snarled, showing rather large canines. The leader of the camp of bandits stood from his throne and made his way back to his room, leaving the other bandits to clean up the body. They were just glad it wasn't them that was killed by Levesky. Me. The next day, Naruto and Sukuno stood out in the middle of a field. Their eyes trained on one another. Both were equipped with a staff and seemed ready for battle. Around Naruto's ankles and wrists were the chakra weights. And Naruto was dressed in a new outfit, it was a crimson gi with black trimmings around the neckline and a black sash keeping his pants up. Now Naruto we've got training to do. Today you will be watching as I demonstrate some of the things that chakra can do. After that we will spar with our staffs and I will correct you on any mistakes you make. Got it? Sukuno said. He also knew the added weights would make it harder for Naruto to move. Yes sensei. Good. Then after the staff training we will have you do physical exercises and finish up with combat. Sukuno said. He walked over to the middle of the field and glanced around. He extended his senses to see if anyone was around to watch them while they were training. Once he detected that there was no stragglers, he decided he would demonstrate some of the jutsus he's learned. Alright first you should know that when it comes to shinobi, we are attuned to certain elements. My main element is canton or fire and my secondary is earth or doden. Sukuno went through some hand seals before placing his fingers near his mouth. Canton. Gokaku no jutsu. Naruto was surprised to see a giant raging ball of fire spew from Sukuno's lips and fly into the air. Once Sukuno deemed it reached high enough, he cut the flow of chakra and watched it disperse into millions of tiny orange particles. Whoa that was pretty cool, Naruto admitted, it might not have been destructive as his key based techniques but he felt that those flames were hot. So they were just as deadly, can I see a Doden technique now? Sure, 
Tsukuno said while going through more hand seals, internally converting his chakra nature to Doden. But I'm going to need you to help in this one. Get a key blast ready. Okay. Naruto held out his hand and a small key ball formed. Ready to fire at any moment's notice. Ready when you are. Doden. Doryuso, two spears of made of stone and rock ripped itself from the earth below and flew straight at Naruto. Naruto seen them coming and fired off two key blasts. Once the spears and the blasts connected, it erupted into a small shower of pebbles. Wow that's incredible, Naruto said with childlike wonder, and it seemed those were just the tip of the iceberg when it came to the possibilities of chakra. Too bad his body was already adapted to ki, oh well he would make use of what he already had. Well he actually didn't know if he could use chakra but it sounded unlikely since he already used ki. He would have to ask Sukuno sensei about it later. Naruto reached behind him and pulled out his staff. Are you ready sensei Oji? Naruto teased. Sukuno's eyebrows twitched slightly. Yes come hurry so this old man can whip that ass of yours. Naruto smirked with anticipation and charged forward. Jumping up, he brought the staff downward for an overhead strike. The attack was easily blocked by Sukuno, though you could hear the loud clang of when both staffs connected. Returning to the ground, Naruto furiously began to attack Sukuno with his staff. Doing jabs, trying sweeps, anything his mind could think of really. This was his first time wielding a weapon after all. Naruto lunged forward with another strike. He not only missed but he felt his feet being swept out from underneath him. Naruto used his free hand to catch himself from hitting the ground. He was about to push himself back up when he felt Sukuno's staff clock him on the head. Ouch damn it. Sukuno chuckled. The boy had a lot to learn, but it would be fun to teach him. Me the sun finally began to set on the day and both Sukuno and Naruto could be seen battling each other in hand to hand combat. The staff training had gone pretty good for the first day. After finding out what Naruto needed to work on with his bojutsu training, they hit it hard. Sukuno corrected Naruto's stances whenever his foot was out of place or his weight was unevenly balanced. Taught him proper striking with the staff and other things. Once completed with bojutsu training for the day, Sukuno had Naruto do some intense physical exercises. To start out, he had him run three laps around the rather large field. 50 push ups followed by 50 sit ups, 25 pull ups on a nearby tree. And to toughen up his knuckles, Sukuno decided to have Naruto attack the thick bark of the tree. 100 punches and kicks to the bark. Sukuno laughed at the bruising Naruto had obtained, but the child surprisingly didn't complain too much. Considering he was from a race of warriors bred for battle, it did make sense in some ways. Once the physical exercises were done, Sukuno let Naruto eat his rather large packed dinner and have a 25 minute break. Once the break was over, they would do hand to hand combat. And now here they were, two hours into training. They agreed no key attacks or jutsus, pure fighting techniques. Naruto bashed Sukuno across the face, the older man's head snapping to the side. Sukuno returned the hit with a punch of his own followed up by a palm strike. Naruto took the punch but managed to block the palm strike. Naruto was smaller than Sukuno so he was using that a bit to his advantage. It made the former shinobi have to reach down to strike him. Though it seemed Sukuno made up for that disability with his quickness. Sukuno brought both fists down like he was about to slam them down in a jackhammer motion. Naruto threw his own hands up and blocked the oncoming strike. Leaping up and doing a backflip, Naruto felt his foot connect with Sukuno's jaw. Once his feet hit the ground, Naruto raced forward and began to assault Sukuno's midsection with punches. Sukuno grunted in pain, refusing to spit up the bile from his stomach. The kid hit hard. Naruto's assault was stopped as Sukuno brought his knee up and it connected with the Saiyan child's chin and he quickly followed up his knee strike with a hard kick. Naruto dug his feet into the ground as the force of the kick pushed against his smaller body with violent intensity. Growling Naruto pushed himself and ran at Sukuno as fast as he could. Sukuno watched as Naruto's form blurred slightly out of his sight, sure he wasn't fighting at full power but at the level he was fighting at, it showed how fast the younger fighter was moving. Sukuno's train of thought was interrupted quite harshly as Naruto rammed his cranium into his sensei's face. Sukuno hacked out a gasp of surprise. He grunted as his body slammed into the ground and he slightly skidded across the grassy surface. Naruto panted, sweat dripped from his brow. 
His body was completely sore and it felt like his knees were ready to give out due to exhaustion. But his will refused to falter even the slightest, he would push himself till his body gave out on him. Naruto watched as Sukuno sat up and rubbed his jaw, glancing at Naruto with a smirk. All right brat, I think training is done with today. You've definitely impressed me. Haha. <laughs> Thanks sensei. With that being said, the pupils in Naruto's vanished and he fell to the ground. Unconscious and exhausted, the Saiyan child rested on that soft ground and snored. Sukuno picked himself up off the ground still rubbing where Naruto had headbutted him. Damn while the child didn't think of proper strategies, he sure made up for it with his ferocious intensity. Sukuno knew though he would have to teach Naruto how to focus and come up with strategies. Brute force and ferocious intensity only got you so far in the shinobi world. Sukuno smiled slightly though as he lifted Naruto up and began carrying him back to the village. They would resume their training tomorrow. Me the two days finally passed and Naruto squeezed out as much training as he could. Training in Bojutsu and Taijutsu, he had some time to practice improving his key attacks and learning more about chakra from Sukuno. Sukuno also tried to make Naruto understand the importance of coming up with strategies in battle. Naruto understood why he had to learn the importance of a good strategy. It could probably save his life one day on the chance his strength fails him. The day had finally arrived when the leader of those scummy bandits would arrive and they were ready. Both Saiyan and Shinobi waited by the entrance of the town. Waiting for the arrival of the leader, they made sure all the villagers were locked up safe in their homes or moved to a secure location, they didn't want them involved in this confrontation. The sun was already beginning to rise above the horizon, its light covering the small town like a blanket. Two hours into the morning, trouble was making its way towards them. Naruto and Sukuno noticed the group approach the entrance at a slow pace. We can't let them bring any trouble towards the village Naruto. Let's meet them halfway. Yes sensei. Both sprinted towards the oncoming mass of bandits and met them in the middle. Covering a great amount of distance in just seconds. The bandits all stopped when they noticed Naruto and Sukuno approaching. Naruto noticed one particular individual standing at the front of the bandits, one he didn't see days prior. From his presence alone you could tell he was the leader of the bandits. The duo came to a halt in front of the group. So is this the child that gave you problems? The man asked before he snorted. Doesn't look like much, more like a brat pretending to be a shinobi. Don't underestimate him Levesky sama one shouted. He's stronger than he appears. He took us all out with ease, another said. Oh please, like that's a hard thing to do, Levesky said before he approached Naruto. Do you want me to fight him Naruto? Sukuno asked. Something was tell the former shinobi that there was something. Peculiar about this Levesky guy. Sukuno knew he was a former shinobi, but there was something else too. No sensei, I told those scum that I would be the one to face this bastard and fighting him is what I will do. Besides how else will I know how much stronger I've gotten despite the short amount of time. Levesky stood before Naruto and Sukuno. What's your name brat? Levesky asked. Naruto and this brat is going to beat you to a pulp. Naruto smashed a fist into his open palm for emphasis. You've got guts brat, Levesky said. I can't wait to show them to you. Bring it on, Naruto and Levesky collided with one another. Fists connected and you could hear the impact of when they connected. The ground underneath them slightly buckled, small cracks appearing. Naruto dropped low and tried to sweep Levesky off his feet. Levesky did a back handspring and avoided the attempted sweep from Naruto. The muscles in Naruto's leg tensed as he pushed himself forward, not letting Levesky put too much distance between them and his fist cocked back, loaded and ready to strike. Levesky immediately put up his defense as Naruto threw his punch. Levesky felt the bones in his arm tingle slightly and he could feel jolts running through his nerves, the kid definitely hit hard. Both Naruto and Levesky began to unleash a flurry of punches and kicks on one another. The two became specks that clashed all over the road, invisible to all eyes except for Sukuno's since he was the only one besides the two fighters trained to follow such speed. Levesky karate chopped Naruto in the neck. The Saiyan child hacked out a cough before he retaliated and smashed Levesky across the face with his fist. Naruto was able to duck under Levesky's counterattack and landed a teeth rattling uppercut. Naruto spun in the air and attempted to perform a roundhouse kick, 
Levesky quickly brought up his arms to shield himself. His arms absorbed most of the impact, reacting quickly he snatched Naruto's smaller legs and used his strength to slam Naruto in the ground. He lifted the smaller fighter up again before repeating the same action and slammed Naruto into the ground. Lifting up Naruto once more, he brought him close to face level. Naruto's eyes were closed and it looked like he was in pain. I must say you're an interesting child, Levesky said, but there's no way you can defeat me. Oh please, Naruto said, opening his eyes and looking at him calmly, I haven't even gotten serious yet. With that said, Naruto once again struck Levesky in the face causing the older fighter to let go of him. Naruto snagged onto Levesky's arm and used his abnormal strength to lift up the leader of the bandits and judo throw him. Levesky's body hit the ground, but he was quick on the recovery as he jumped back to his feet. You could see his nose was bleeding and it looked like his cheek was slightly bruised. Levesky watched as Naruto had his hand outstretched and pointed at him. What was this strange child doing? Naruto channeled Ki into his arm and sent it rushing down towards his hand. Ha! Huh. A shockwave of Ki ripped from Naruto's hand. Levesky's eyes widened, he couldn't see the attack but he knew it was coming as the air instantly popped when the Brad shouted. Levesky felt a force slam into his face with all the gentleness of a pissed off lion. Levesky was sent flying off his feet and crashed into one of the surrounding trees. Levesky Sama! The bandits cried out, shocked that this child had actually hurt their leader. It frightened them because if he could injure Levesky like that, they knew he really took it easy on them. On the side, Sukuno was watching with narrowed eyes. Why did the name Levesky sound so familiar to him? Like he had heard the name before. Is that it? Naruto asked the fallen leader. No, Levesky grunted, he pulled himself back to his feet and he stared at Naruto. Watching as the child slipped back into his fighting stance. Like you. I haven't begun to fight all that serious yet either. What was that strange jutsu though? Levesky thought to himself. Was it some form of futon jutsu? No I didn't see him go through any hand seals. I'll have to be careful, he might even cause me to take it up a notch, we'll see. Are you ready for round two? Whenever you were kid? The battle then continued on. Naruto and Levesky stared down the other. Both had tested the water against one another getting a proper feel of what the other could do when it came to hand-to-hand -to -hand combat. Naruto had yet to unleash any key attacks and it seemed Levesky hadn't used any jutsu yet. Sensei dropped the weights. Naruto shouted towards Sukuno. Sukuno noted, it seemed the situation was beginning to get serious and he didn't need those weights holding Naruto back. After holding a seal, Sukuno decreased the weights. Naruto took off the weights and threw them towards Sukuno. The Saiyan child rubbed his wrists, feeling a lot lighter now and he began to stretch. I must admit brat, Levesky said, I've never fought a child that's as strong as you, most kids your age don't take their training as serious. I'm not like any other child you've met before, Naruto finished his stretching, he retook his fighting stance, you ready to continue? Whenever you were, as soon as the words left his mouth, Naruto went on the attack. Levesky's senses went on high alert when Naruto vanished. He crossed his arms as fast as he could, Naruto's foot slamming into his arms. Levesky dug his feet into the ground as he skidded back. Levesky pushed himself forward, meeting Naruto in his oncoming charge. Levesky tried to attack Naruto but the Saiyan child was much faster than him now. He easily avoided the attack, leaping up and twisting in the air, Naruto backhanded Levesky. Levesky caught himself before he could crash into a tree. Levesky leaned his head to the side as Naruto's fist suddenly appeared at the spot his head once occupied. Levesky could hear the bark on the tree crack and splinter. Good thing I avoided that, Levesky thought as he gathered a bit of chakra in his fists, throwing his fist up, he connected with an uppercut. Naruto grunted as he went airborne, rubbing the slight stinging sensation from his jaw. Naruto stopped his flight and looked down to see Levesky going through hand seals. Futon. Daitopa. Levesky fired off his air bullet towards Naruto. Naruto was unable to see the jutsu, so it came to a big surprise when an invisible air bullet slammed into Naruto. Ouch. Naruto released a pulse of ki to stop his out of control flight. What the hell was that? He muttered. He had sensed something coming towards him but he couldn't track it with his eyes. Naruto watched as Levesky reached behind him and threw a volley of shuriken at him. 
Naruto flew at the oncoming shower of metal and was able to evade them. Ki flared to life in Naruto's hands. Take this. Naruto fired twin ki blasts from his hands. Levesky's eyes widened, he never seen anything like that before. He leapt to the side as the spot he had been standing exploded in a shower of earth and rubble. Levesky looked up only to be greeted by a vicious right hook. Naruto continued with a left, a right, another left and was finally hit with a kick. Naruto shot another key blast which this time connected with Levesky. He pushed more key into the attack and the blast carried Levesky. Levesky yelped as the strange technique was burning into his chest. Levesky also not only slammed into a tree but he went through it as well, causing the massive nature giant to come crashing down. Naruto watched and waited for his opponent to re-emerge. Impressive, Sukuno commented from his side of the battlefield. Naruto has improved and he's a lot faster than he was before. Yet he's not using all of his new speed. Why is that? Levesky emerged from the woods, cuts littering his face and he was glaring at Naruto. I can tell even now you're not using your full power bread. You took off those weights yet you move at the same speed as earlier and those punches haven't changed much. My body isn't used to the new speed I've attained from my training, but if you want me to unleash it, Naruto tensed the muscles in his legs. Prepare to be sorry that you asked. Levesky was about to retort with a clever comment but was cut off by Naruto moving faster than he could track. Levesky tasted Naruto's elbow as it smashed into his mouth, spinning around Naruto's heel found its place at the side of Levesky's head. Levesky fell to the ground, groaning a bit. Naruto leapt up in the air, fist raised high and he was bringing it down to cave in Levesky's skull. He never noticed Levesky make a hand sign. Naruto's fist caved in something but it wasn't Levesky's head. He noticed it was a log that was now smashed to bits. Kawarimi Jutsu, can't forget the basics. Levesky commented, stepping out from behind one of the trees surrounding them. He formed another hand seal and chakra began to seep out of his body and cover his form. I haven't pushed myself all the way yet, I haven't transformed. Transformed? Naruto muttered wondering what Levesky was talking about. You'll see, Naruto noticed something when those words left Levesky's lips, his voice seemed to be rougher and even have a growl to it. Naruto watched as Levesky's eyes bled to a sharp crystal blue color and hair sprouted rapidly upon his face. Levesky began to growl and it revealed his longer and sharper canines that gleamed menacingly. Naruto's eyes narrowed, Levesky looked more animalistic than human now. So that's it huh? Sukuno muttered, seeing the transformation from Levesky. Sukuno had heard about clans that were so attuned with a certain animal, they could actually transform and take on the appearance of said animal. What the hell are you? Naruto asked. I'm a part of the Lycan clan, a clan of humans that long ago were cursed by the gods themselves. Levesky grinned. The Lycan clan was cursed to take on the appearance of a wolf or werewolves as we've taken to call ourselves. Originally this was intended to have us all hunted down and killed by other clans. But when chakra was given to us, it made us stronger. He flexed his claws to show emphasis. By the look of his eyes, it seems he's only a beta wolf. Still I can feel his power has increased. Hopefully Naruto's training will pay off, Sukuno said, wondering if he should interfere in the fight or not. He knew though that Naruto would be completely pissed at him should he attempt to take this fight away from him. Damn Saiyan child and his pride. His claws are sharp and the senses of a wolf are even greater than that of a human's, Naruto thought. He reached behind him and pulled out his staff. I'll have to be careful. Levesky pulled out a kanai for his left hand and planned to use the claws on his right to shred the young child into ribbons. Get ready to die. Levesky roared. Tensing the muscles in his leg, Levesky vanished. Oh no you don't. Naruto mimicked the beta wolf's action. The two fighters clashed all amongst the clearing, not even caring where their battle was going. While Naruto and the newly transformed Levesky were battling it out, his group of bandits had ideas of their own. While the boss is fighting the brat, we should raid the town again, one suggested. Yeah and with that brat distracted, there's no way we can be stopped this time. The civilians will be dead and soon enough the boss will have finished off the kid. What about the old man? One pointed towards Sukuno. What about him? It's not like he can stop us, but didn't you hear the brat? He called him sensei. That means teacher and the teacher is usually stronger than the student. An actual intelligent bandit said. He's right you know, 
Sukuno called out, having heard their conversation. You all can rush me if you please but know this, you'll probably die. Arrogant shit, you think you can take us on? Yes. Sukuno said dryly before pinching his nose in annoyance. Okay I'll give you fools this. Any bandit that wants to live take a step out of the group and move a good few feet away. Any that doesn't follow this order will die. Only three actually moved away from the group, leaving about 50 or more bandits left, cocky enough to believe they could get past him. All right then I warned ya. Sukuno whipped out a kanai and threw it towards the remaining bandits. He went through a few hand seals quickly. Kanai Cage Bunshin. With that, the single kanai sprouted multiple duplicates of itself and began to ascend upon the bandits. They didn't even have time to scream out as the kanai pierced a major artery or some other fatal point on their body. In a matter of seconds, multiple corpses rested upon the ground, soaking the earth with crimson liquid. Turning back to the fight between Naruto and Levesky, Sukuno muttered something. I warned them. Naruto reappeared a few feet from Sukuno and panted slightly. The shinobi noticed sweat dripped from his pupil's brow, and his GI was slightly torn. But the fire in Naruto's eyes didn't die out or falter, not even for a moment. Sukuno looked over and seen Levesky without a scratch, probably due to the fact being a lichen gave them an advanced healing factor. But Sukuno could see Levesky was breathing hard like Naruto. Dang Levesky san, you're strong, Naruto commented, still on the defense in case he decided to attack. I must admit, Naruto, that you're strong yourself, a formidable opponent whose power I can respect, Levesky grinned. But don't think that means you're going to win. Of course I'll win, just you try and beat me. Naruto rushed forward, the ground beneath him split and carved a clean path towards Levesky. Steel met steel as Naruto's staff and Levesky's kanai clashed against one another. Naruto had to duck under Levesky's claw swipes or risk getting his face torn off, he preferred if that didn't happen. The two became a blur once more, invisible to all the untrained eyes. But Sukuno could follow all the high speed action. Naruto's staff would bash some part of Levesky's cranium. Levesky was able to hit Naruto with a devastating kick, due to his longer legs. Fists, feet, staff attacks, and more were used to batter one another. Sukuno honestly couldn't tell who had the upper hand. I think it's about time we finished this fight, what do you say, Levesky san? Naruto asked. Avoiding another fatal stab from his opponent's kanai, Naruto leapt back and placed his staff back in its holder. One final attack. Winner takes all huh? Levesky said, I can do that. Putting away the kanai, Levesky began to mold his chakra and went through hand seals. Ki shrouded Naruto's body and he began to take flight. Rising up into the air, Naruto began to control the ki that shrouded his body and started to change the nature of it. If one looked closely, they could see that his key was beginning to morph into fire. The Saiyan child cringed slightly as the heat surrounding his body increased and he knew soon it would become unbearable. This was a very new technique and Naruto had never been able to figure out if it was battle worthy yet. Well he had no signature key attacks and it seemed Levesky could take a beating. So Naruto knew he had to end it here. Fenikusu no Sakebi. You won't survive this next one kid, this is the end, Levesky declared finishing up his last hand sign. Canton. Hanting Wukami. Fire style. Hunting wolf. Levesky spewed a stream of fire towards Naruto. As the fire raced into the sky, the stream began to take on the appearance of a snarling wolf. That won't stop me. Naruto became a literal fireball that descended towards Levesky's attack. Fanakusu no Sakebi. Cry of the Phoenix. Both attacks collided and a struggle for dominance began to ensue. Naruto had his fist etched forward, shrouded in ki and using it to try and break through the snarling inflamed wolf. The hanting wukami was pushing against him hard, small burning embers for eyes peering at the Saiyan child in the blazing inferno. Naruto's eyes burned with a fierce determination. He couldn't and would not lose. The inflamed wolf actually bit down on Naruto's arm, he refused to scream in pain as the fire burned his skin. Damn this is intense, Sukuno said. He was shocked at what he was seeing. He had fought many battles in his career as a shinobi and many were scary and intense in their own right. But to see a child doing battle with a former shinobi and performing in such an amazing fashion. Sukuno had to admit to himself that he was proud he was the one getting to teach Naruto. Ha! Huh.
Naruto reared his key shrouded fist back and hit the wolf as hard as he could. The wolf yelped, releasing its grip on Naruto and the technique began to fall apart. What? Levesky yelled, shocked that his technique was defeated. And now he couldn't move, paralyzed in fear as the child raced towards him now. Naruto slammed his head into Levesky's chest, using his small body like a battering ram. The beta wolf hacked out blood as he was thrown across the clearing and collided harshly with the ground. The fire died out around Naruto's body and he panted in exhaustion. Sukuno was by Naruto's side instantly, moving faster than somebody his age should. Sukuno noticed small burns all over Naruto's now exposed torso. Both attacks had completely annihilated Naruto's GI top and his pants were burnt and had holes. But Naruto was smiling, knowing he had won the battle. Opening a tired eye, he looked at Sukuno. How did I do sensei? You did marvelous kid and you didn't need my assistance. I'm proud of you, Sukuno smiled. Ha ha, Naruto chuckled out weakly as his eyes began to close, thanks sensei. And with that, Naruto fell into the blissful world of sleep. Me. A few miles away, two hours later, Hiruzen Serutobi took a drag from his pipe before slowly exhaling a small smog of toxic vapor. Currently the third Hokage was standing upon the Hokage mountain, watching over his beautiful village. Despite being in the middle of the third shinobi war, you could never tell with how serene the image before him looked. Suddenly Hiruzen smiled, sensing the presence behind him. What can I do for you Minato-kun? Minato grinned sheepishly. Good morning Hiruzen-sama. The grin lasted for a second before disappearing and Minato adopted a serious look. I'm sure you've already heard about the incident a few miles outside the village. I have indeed. From what reports say, it happened near one of the minor towns that we trade with, the third answered. Was one of our squads ambushed or something? Have there been any calls out for backup? Minato asked. No I haven't sent any squads out that way today Minato-kun. And I'm sure you heard the most interesting part about the incident? Something about a massive fireball suddenly appearing in the sky before descending towards the ground? Minato asked. If that had happened, shouldn't there have been a massive explosion? Correct. Hiruzen took another drag of his pipe. From what our spies in the town say, there was a kid that seemed to be the epicenter of it all. A child caused that? Minato was surprised. He had never heard of a technique that caused a giant fireball to appear in the sky. But for it to be caused by a kid, well Minato sure wanted to meet him. Should we send a squad to investigate the area? Maybe search for the child? No Minato. Everything is okay. Hiruzen looked over his shoulder and stared at the blonde Junin. And besides don't you have team to be training? You might want to hurry up so you can make your date with a certain red-haired Kunoichi. Minato blushed slightly. He would have asked how Hiruzen knew about his date but at the same time he wasn't surprised. As the Hokage. He probably knew all about what was going on in Konoha. You're right Hokage-sama, I will be off then. Goodbye Minato-kun. With that being said, the blonde Junin vanished. Hiruzen still staring over his village, his gaze this time focused more beyond its protective walls. What are you up to Sukuno-kun? Hiruzen wondered, he would have to write that old fossil sometime soon. The end. Now we will see you in the next video.